Hey, the biblical truth of our hymns. If my phone rings, I'm waiting for the doctor to call to make an appointment, and I'm going to leave it on just so I know. I'm not going to interrupt it's the message, but if it rings, I'll know it called. But the biblical truth of our hymns, and we're looking at the wonderful grace of Jesus. Now, in my opinion, this is much better than Amazing Grace. Okay? Just my opinion. So the story. The writer of the hymn, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, Haldor, and I don't want to mispronounce his name, H-A-L-D-O-R, Lyrensis, L-I-L-L-E-N-A-S, and I apologize to the man for getting it wrong, but how many people get the name Stiley correct? He's from Norway, immigrated to the United States as a small child. Converted to Christianity at age 21, entered Bible college and later became an elder and pastor in the Nazarene church. We'll look at that in a moment. He obtained his musical training through personal and correspondence study. Correspondence work. Don't blow out a war. Oh, you do it by mail. He and his wife, Bertha, worked as evangelists for a time, traveling the country. Later, he settled down in Illinois and bought himself a used organ for the exposed sum of five dollars. <laughs> I think it five dollars to expose about. <laughs> they didn't have much money at the time. He composed the wonderful grace of Jesus on that organ and made five dollars in the sales at him. In 1924, he founded his last name, Laninus. Publishing Company, which later became the Nazarene Publishing Company. And you'll see that a lot in your hymn, your hymn. He worked there for 20, now 1924. I'm going to read something currently in a moment. In 1924, and look at this hymn. So he worked there for 20 years as the, his company, the Nazarene Publishing Company, then the Nazarene Publishing Company, as 20, editor 20 years. Together with his wife, they wrote 4,000 hymns. And in 1982, he was in, in, inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. While the tune may lean, lend itself being played up tempo in a bubbly sort of fashion, what a way to describe it. The lioness himself cautioned about the hymns being played too fast. He wanted it to be slower so that everyone could focus on the wonderful grace of Jesus. Okay. 1924. He found it. So we have a statement here. Alright, this is the faith of the Nazarene. Articles of faith. We believe that the grace of God through Jesus Christ is freely bestowed upon all people. Enabling all who will turn from sin to righteousness, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for pardon and cleansing from sin, and follow good works pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Pardon and cleansing from sin and follow good works and please and acceptable in this sight. We also believe that human race created in God likeness included the ability to choose between right and wrong, and human beings were made morally responsible that through the fall of Adam they became deprived so they could not now turn and prepare themselves by their own natural strength, work to faith, and call upon God. Now the notes I'm going to read now, let me read what they say. The Constitution changes adopted in 2017 by the General Assembly and the brackets, which I'm going to read now. I'm quoting. <clears throat> but we also believe, as of 2017, that the grace of God through Jesus Christ is freely bestowed upon all people, enabling all who will turn from sin to righteousness, believe on Jesus Christ for pardon and cleansing from sin, and follow good works pleasing and acceptable to his sight. Not the works leads any man both. We believe that all persons through the possession of the experience of regeneration 
the entire sense of sanctification may fall from grace and apostatize, and unless they repent of their sins, be hopelessly and turn to leave law. Wow, somebody's following the book of Hebrews. No. That was adopted in 2017. That's the Church of Nazarene. And the manual I'm looking at is from 2017 to 2021. And I have heard that the Church of Nazarene in the early years were, were a good church. A lot of things were good. Then they go sour. So the wonderful grace of Jesus. The wonderful grace of Jesus. There you go. Greater than all my sin. <laughs> That's what you need. You need that something is better than my sin. And what is better and more than my sin? God's grace. And grace is a favor, goodwill, kindness, a grant of act of it's it's an unmerited love. I don't deserve grace. And yet undeserving of grace, how wonderful the grace of Jesus. This him named Jesus. Amazing grace, I don't find Jesus. This one puts grace and Jesus. I'll sing this hymn more than Amazing Grace, my opinion. Greater than all my sin. You know how great sin is? And when he says my sin, again, Haldor, I, I, forgive me, sir, I know you're in glory. Forgive me for mispronouncing your name. But how about just all sin when Jesus took that cup and said, Father, this cup, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You don't know who Stiley Hayward is, and if I were to say, greater than all my sin, many of my sins are under the blood, and God doesn't forget, doesn't remember and forgotten and cleanse me. First John 1 9. But if they were to be recalled, it will never be recalled. I couldn't describe the filth. That I got involved in before I was saved and after I'm saved and I'm glad today I'm not a Nazarene because I would be eternal damnation I could lose it so the scriptures the King James Bible says you can't lose it and rightly dividing and studying shows I can't lose it unless you go to the book of Hebrews and you take out of context unless you go to the book of Matthew and take out of context he that endures to the end that's not church age. There's no church in Hebrews and there's no church in Matthew. But let's move on. So I have a grace that's greater than all my sin. On the aspect of this, of how do I be saved? How shall my tongue describe it? What could you say? about the grace the wonderful grace the greater grace over my sin what could you describe it only thing to describe it is write down all the sins that you have done confess them believe on the lord jesus christ and god wipes away all those sins now write down all what you get from salvation a new birth <clears throat> a new name, a new body, a new heavenly place, new Jerusalem, new, no more pain, no more sorrow, all tears wiped away, a crown, an inheritance, reward. Keep on going. When Jesus said, I came to speak of the heavenly thing, because you've got, you've got the worldly and earthly thing. Where Paul says it, man, it's beyond comprehension. When the Bible says, I make all things new. Where shall his praise begin? 
Should be getting right out of the womb. This should begin the day we were saved. How many people, and unless I see a change, a, a new creature, a new man, I don't believe you're saved. Save your emails, your phone calls, and all that. How can you not get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, get cleansed, get washed, and then not praise the Lord and serve the Lord? Listen, I got saved April 21st, 1987. April 22nd, I was declaring before the church, that I, hey, I received Christ yesterday. I went home and told my father, Dad, you need not to go to hell. From the day that I was saved, I was praising the Lord. I felt clean. I felt new. And there are people, they say a prayer or whatever, and then they get up and they, there's never a change. There's nothing about their life and there's no praising God. James says, faith and work. Taking away my burden. And taking away the guilt. Taking away that that that, that load you carry as in pilgrim's progress. He comes to the cross. He kneels at the cross. He sees the bleeding, suffering Savior. And he believes on him in that bundle of that burden on his back. Finally. Tumbles away. Into an abyss that can't be seen. I forget if the house interpreter or evangelist, he asks, hey, how can I get rid of this burden? And one of them says, when you come to the cross. When you come to the cross. Setting my spirit free. That part of you that's God, whether you're saved or lost, God breathed into man, he became a living soul. I'm fresh of breathing now. I'm no more breathing the, the pollutions of the world, but I've got a new breath of the Holy Spirit. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. It reached me. It reached Aldor, and I, put, I apologize to your name. All the names of people that despise and reject God, we can say easily. Here's a name probably written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, by, just by the testimony of his word. And remember he said, <clears throat> don't sing this. <laughs> sing it slow. Why? So you can, re so you can reflect on Jesus. And his wonderful grace. We'll come to reframe the chorus in a moment. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Give him credit for one thing. He mentioned J-E-S-U-S. -S. Reaching to all the lost. Now, the Bible says he redeemed many, but he reaches all the lost. Every lost man that has come into this world has been given a light of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at that point, what man does with the light, what God will do with that man. Now, I grew up as a Roman Catholic Polak church. I didn't believe that church in anything of that church. But I did reflect that there was a God and there is a Jesus. I reflected a moment that he was born in Bethlehem. I reflected a moment that he died on that cross. He came off 
that cross and they buried him, came out three days and three nights. His mother was a virgin, didn't know she was a, a, a Judah, didn't know he was Jewish. But I would reflect on the moment when I did go to Catholic Church, why was he still on that cross nailed? If he arose again three days and three nights, and it always bothered me. But God said, okay, there's my son Jesus. Here I am. What are you going to do? I'm going to believe. What about this religious organization? I don't believe it. And when I ran into trouble as a child and as a teenager growing up, I would run to the Catholic Church. I wouldn't be running to the Catholic Church. I'd be running to the altar where God, supposedly, far from it, but I ran to God where I thought I could find God, by the light. Then when I heard the gospel, on April 13th, I didn't, uh, I didn't get saved right away. It took me from Sunday morning to Saturday afternoon, but there was something in me reaching out to God because I was, I didn't know what I was yet. I wasn't right with God. I was lost without sin. Excuse me. I was lost and in my sin. I became saved and became sinless and became a child of God. God reaching down to me in 1987 in a pew, April 13th. Six days later, a man opened up a Bible with me, told me I was a sinner going to hell. That's me lost. God reached down to my heart. By it, I have been pardoned. You know what pardon is? It's to be received by your guilt. If I was in jail and the governor of the state came into my jail cell and said, Sir, are you guilty of the crime or any crime? I say, Governor, nope. I'm innocent and I've been framed. The governor would turn around and say, Well, have a good day. Close the door next. The governor comes in and he says, Sir, are you guilty of the crimes charged against you? Are you guilty of any? I said, Your Honor, yes. And not only so of the ones I'm being charged, but they're there are charges against me that you don't even know. The governor would take a piece of paper out of his hand. He'd take his pen and sign the document and say, you've been pardoned. See, a pardon can only be handed and received by a person who is guilty. Too many people are saying this prayer, say this prayer, do this, without being guilty, without being repentant without acknowledging their sin, and that's not a pardon. And have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. God, I am guilty. I am going to hell. God, pardon me. Saved me. And of all the world and afterlifes and all that of religion, science, education, and entertainment, there is nothing and was nothing and are nothing that can save my soul but the wonderful grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. God left his throne and died on the cross. I was resurrected three days and three nights according to the scriptures and is seated back at the right hand of the Father. Never to be sacrificed again. Chains have been torn asunder. <clears throat> chains of sin, chains of death, chains of, of the devil, chains of bondage, chains of slavery to the flesh and to the world. Given me liberty. That's what really cry. Oh, I want liberty. I want rights. I'm American. I gotta do this. You forget America is not the source of your rights. God is. 
And why should God continue your rights when you don't use your rights, you don't use your liberty to honor, love, and worship God and Jesus Christ, the Son? Why should he even bother with your liberty? There are men in the Bible, when the government said, don't preach Jesus, they said, we're going to obey God more than the man, and we're going to face the judgment, we're going to face the, the, the harassment, we're going to face jail, we're going to face death. You got Americans today, oh, I got rights, I got freedom, you won't even set your foot in the church out. May God destroy the liberty and the freedom. It still won't get them to church. We got liberty. Now, what I read of the Nazarene doctrine, 2017, if you sin after salvation, and if you don't ever repent of those sins, it said you're going to be eternally damned. No, I'm not. I'll get wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ, but I ain't eternally damned after I became saved through Jesus Christ. I've rightly divided Matthew and Hebrew. And I've looked at the Pauline epistle. And I've looked at, I am bone of his bone, and I am hand of his hand. I'll never leave thee for safety. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I got liberty to sin. And God's got the liberty to chastise me as his child. My liberty, I like to serve the Lord more than the flesh. For the wonderful grace of Jesus, there's that name again, reaches me. The wonderful grace of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. Reaching the most defiled. Let me tell you today. Today. The most defiled among Christians today would be... Oh. Janet Pelizzi. No. Janet. The Speaker of the House. Janet. I'm not saying her last name. You know, there would be some Christians... Uh, that would get so angry if she came out and said, I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior. There's some Christians that mocked me. You actually pray for her soul? Yeah, many are not. I got a Christian friend now. You know what? I never realized praying for her soul. Most defiled, out of Hitler, of all that he done, and before he died, if he called upon the wonderful grace of Jesus, and by the blood of Jesus Christ alone, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, he would receive the wonderful grace of Jesus. The most vile, the most wicked, the most sinner. There, there is none. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. By his transforming power. Making him God's dear child. Look at that. The wonderful grace of Jesus makes a sinner. A child of God. And not only that, we get the comforter that comes and dwells with us. We get the comforter that lives in us. We get the comf comforter. Forever glorified in us to be pleasing before God through Jesus Christ. That's the most wild, wicked, sick, sinner ever. You take the worst person you can think of, and that man gets saved, that man believes on Jesus, he becomes a child of God through the wonderful grace of Jesus. Purchasing peace in heaven. Now you don't get peace without repenting. You don't get peace without righteousness. 
You don't become God's dear child without the righteousness of Jesus. He was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be the righteousness of God in him, Jesus. And then when you get God's righteousness, then you get peace. There's no love unless you know the love of God and the joy of God. Then there's peace. Many, too many want peace without righteousness, and that ends with war and conflict. eternity forever and it's sorry that this man's church today in their doctrine of statement of their church faith is you can lose it for eternal damnation that his church believes in 2017 and on the wonderful grace of jesus sorry you're a miserable rotten sinner again go to hell that's not what this guy's writing about The vilest person of all, this man writes about. And the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. You don't want to know who Sally Hayward was. Wonderful matches grace of... Wonderful... The match, I was going to try to sing it, but... The wonderful... The matches... Wonderful. Excellent. Great. And you can't match it. You cannot get the grace of God with religion. You cannot get the grace of God by the Nazarene 2017 doctrine statement by works. You can't go up to God and say, well, I'll take Calvary's cross of Jesus and look what I've got. You're not good enough. You can't match your good with the match with great because the Bible says there is none that do it good. No, not one. Match with grace, the match with grace. Uh, there is that name, Jesus. Deeper than the mighty rolling sea. The rolling sea. There's no other place that is deeper on this earth that they know of right now is the Pacific Ocean. And the only further deeper place than that is a place called hell. And you go there by not receiving the grace of Jesus. By rejecting Jesus. Wonderful grace. All sufficient. For me. Even me. There are people that look at other people. I don't think you're saved. Some people don't think I'm saved because I'm oddball, weirdo, preacho. I am saved, and I know I'm saved. I look at your life and your haphazardness of living that doesn't look like living for Jesus. Broader than the scope of my transgressions. As far as sin I am, Wonderful grace of Jesus is greater than all my sin. Greater far than all my sin and shame. You know what religion does as far as whatever you want to call it? Religion comes short. Of sin and shame. I remember many times growing up as a child, I'd go before a counter, whatever I was buying. And the woman behind the counter would say, That's a dollar twenty, young man. I pray here's a dollar. Oh, I got a nickel. Oh, here's a dollar eight cent. Oh, son, you need more money. You need more. That's what religion does. And then you cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. And you appear before God one day. Father says, okay, I need holiness. I need righteousness. 
Jesus steps up. Mercy steps in. Grace is honored. The Father, my atonement upon the cross of Calvary and the belief of the empty tomb according to the scriptures, this young sinner, I have paid all his debt and then some. Brother, than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame, Jesus Christ has cleansed me. As a Jesus, the grace has magnified, is greater. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. And how many times in these hymns has the name of Jesus missing? Including amazing grace. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Jesus. Praise his name. If there ever was and there's not, but God will ever do, I enter into heaven. And God said, "What? why should I allow you into my heaven? Father, I am your child. Prove it. By the name of Jesus Christ and by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, Father, for my sins, according to the scripture. And they buried him, Father. And he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And what must I do to be saved, Father? I have believed on Jesus. Well done. Oh. That's it. That's it. It ain't your church name. It ain't your baptism. It ain't who you are. It's who Jesus. Wonderful, great hymn with the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I'll take this one over amazing grace any day. And how often is this hymn sung in your church? Next time somebody say, anybody got a hymn? Wonderful grace of Jesus. Wonderful grace of Jesus. How's that? 